everyone, today I wanted to do a lesson on open voice triads or Eric Johnson chords as some people call them, but um, yeah, it's a popular subject amongst guitarists, um, if you've ever seen Eric Johnson play it's a really unique approach to playing chords and um, yeah, it's just a really interesting thing. can seem really complex but it's actually a simple idea that he's kind of applying in a bunch of different ways and to start with this technique all you really need to know is your basic bar chords so for instance we're gonna do it on the fifth fret so the E shape for the A major chord A shape for that D major chord and this one which some people might not have played but we need it for this particular technique and that's just the D chord just moved up the fretboard it's like one of those caged chords so you need to get used to playing them in majors and minors. So your A major, A minor, D major, D minor, and then G major, G minor. So it's those basic shapes, and then all you have to do is really take out the octave note, because the kind of defining feature of these chords generally is that there's no repeated notes. That's where that kind of spacey sound comes from. So if I take out the octave note here, the A note, on the seventh fret on the D string, then I just get this, like I'm, you know, like I'm playing like an A7 chord. So already you can tell there's a lot less going on. There's kind of a lot, there's a lot less harmonics. So now on the next string, try the same thing. So you've got the A shape, which is those, or if you play it like that, and you're just taking again, taking the octave out. So taking out this D note. And the handy thing about the next shape up, that G note, that G chord, sorry, there's the G major, and then our G major chord without the octave is just this. So it's actually easier to play than that bar chord. So then you've got to get used to playing them in their minor forms. So, you know, you've got your A major, and then the A minor. So I've just moved that major third down a semitone to get that minor third. And the same thing with the D major chord, so that's the major. And the same thing again, I've just taken the third in the top there down one fret to get the minor third. And then the same thing on the next one, so you've got that G major. Sorry, I keep sliding into them. So you've got your G major there, and then your G minor. So I've just moved that major third down to a minor third. So that's your basic open voice triads. So actually one of the trickiest things about this technique is the fact you have to do a bit of hybrid picking. So I'm using the pick and I'm using my two middle fingers kind of uh, in different ways depending on what chords we're going to be playing in this, in, with this exercise. So I'm just playing there you can see I'm playing with the pick on the E string, then middle finger I'm playing the A string and then ring finger I'm playing the G string. We'll try the D major chord. Same thing again, same pattern, same shape. And the same thing on the G chord. So that's the basis of these chords, just no repeated notes. So then if you know the diatonic chords to a scale, then you can start moving it around using the majors and minors, much like Eric Johnson does. So if I stick in the key of D major, for example, like I did in the intro, um, I know where all the chords are in relation to where the root is. So I've got the, the D major here. I know that if I go straight up, I've got the four chord and the five chord. You know, if I go up one and down one, and down one fret, I've got the, the three chord. And then the two chord is gonna be right above the D major. So straight away, and if I go down, I've got the fifth, and the fourth, and the sixth, and if you really want to, the seventh. So in this little area, I can just, you know, I can just think, if you're staying within the key, I can just use my diatonic chords. So the next way he uses these chords is by turning them into inversions. So if you don't know what inversions are, it's where you take a note other than the root and use it as the bass note. So example, if I go from say, 
If we use the G chord as an example, the one, uh, you know, this shape up here, the one I was showing you earlier, you've got that. So in this chord, we've got the notes, the root, and then the fifth is uh, with my ring finger, and then the third in the top is with my pinky. So what I'm going to do is take the third in the top and move it into the bass. So now you get a sound like this. So that's a G major chord. And now because the third's in the bottom, I can just lower it by a half step, a semitone, and I get the G minor. So the two together, major, minor. But we can do more with it. We can take that shape up one string and then raise, because we're moving on to the B string and the space between the G and the B string is a major third, I need to play the note higher. So I'm using this shape, this inversion, but if I move the whole thing up one string, I still know that the root of the chord is underneath my first finger. So that's always gonna be my point of reference. But now I'm essentially using the same shape as I was using there, but I've just moved it up one string. And it's the same thing again, the third is in the bass, so I can just lower that. And I'm hybrid picking that as well, so instead of playing it like that, when I was playing the other chords, I'm now playing it like that, so I've got my two fingers on the G and the B string. So major, C minor. In the intro, I was mixing up both the techniques. So I was using the root, and I was using the inversions. So both of those are a D major. I've used that shape I was talking about a moment ago, and I've moved it up a, a tone. So I've got a D major inversion. There's a root again, another root. And then even down here, I can get the inversion with a third in the bass here, with the F sharp in the bass. So it's just that shape I was showing earlier on, that G shape, but just moving it down to there. So that D major, the D not in the bass, it's the third in the bass, that F sharp. So I can go through a whole harmonized scale with just those inversions. So you've got the D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor, C sharp diminished, back to D, the whole thing. I could do the same thing on the next string. with all the root, the root notes. And if you're at all getting lost, don't worry. I've put some sheets up on my website and I will share them just below. And in the intro, I was playing a thing that I saw Eric Johnson do a long time ago on um, an uh, like a studio tour video or something like that, where he creates a really strong cadence by using these inversions. So. You know, he did this thing, it wasn't in this key, but we'll stick in D major. So it was going, he's doing like a minor playable thing, so going G major, G minor. Then he was playing parts of this um, A7 sus4 chord, and then just an A7 chord, and then back to the D. essentially getting that from this. To this. So with these chords, I recommend practicing them with a song you maybe already know, just so you're really confident with the chord sequence, so you're not kind of thinking about that side of things. And then you can just apply the inversions and these shapes however you want and it gives like a drastically different feel to some some tunes and it's inspired me in, in writing and things like that so um, yeah they're just really great chords they sound so so different to to other chord forms and things so um, you can create a really unique, unique sound when you're playing with a band uh, and when if you're playing with a band it's especially good if you don't want to be drowning you know in the mix too much because those chords because you've just got the root third and fifth they're really strong So like I said earlier, I've made up some sheets that I put on my website, go check them out. Um, I, if you have any questions, then message me, I'm more than happy to help. 
So I hope that helps, guys. Thanks so much. Um, and yeah, I hope you have fun with it. Thank you.